morning and welcome to all of you on this beautiful Lord's Day. It's great to have you here, especially our guests. Welcome. We want to thank all those who are hosting our worship today, for those who are serving as ushers, greeters, and readers. We thank our sound and projection crew, Pastor Cassie, who is our preacher today. Thank you, Cassie. And Stacy Minch, who is our organist and pianist. We celebrate a baptism today at the second service. Eliana Ivana Shippey, daughter of Nathan and Tatiana Shippey, and granddaughter of Jerry and Deb Shippey. We are very proud of our Relay for Life team here at, at Calvary. Um, they are a significant part of the, of the um, local area, East Otter Tail Relay for Life, and their major fundraising activity is the pancake breakfast that is happening today. I hope you'll join them after this service. It's a free will offering. There are some other uh, kind of little silent auction things um, as well, so I hope you'll join them. We want to thank all of our Vacation Bible School kids, parents, and adult volunteers for a great week. Last week, when, uh, Sunday through Wednesday, we had a great turnout. Lots of new faces and families. Um, there was a lot of, of pre-registration, kind of maybe our more regular families, and then every day, a long list of, of written-in people who were mostly friends of our kids. And some of them had never been in a church before in their life, and they just had a wonderful time. So it's one of our really great events of the year, and I know many of you uh, helped with that, so thank you. Several of us went down to the Luther, Luther Crest Bible Camp dinner last Thursday to celebrate good things happening there. We helped celeb um, dedicate the first new cabin out of five being built this summer and fall. Uh, with the $30,000 gift that Calvary gave last year, and a total of over $1 million has been pledged or given so far to Luther Crest. So if, you, if your kids have not had a chance to get registered for the summer, Calvary provides lots of support, generally about three-fourths of the cost of going to camp, and you could still get in there. So talk to us. They also continue to need building volunteers. Pete Hallberg is kind of our poster child for, for mission builders, so he's been heading down there regularly. If any of the rest of you would like to join them for a day, it's very well organized and lots of fun. At this time, we take a moment of silence as we wait upon God and prepare ourselves for worship. Please stand as you are able. Let us walk by faith beside our Savior. In Christ is our confidence. Amen. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of mercy, we bring our broken selves to you, the afflictions we suffer and those we inflict on others, ourselves and the world. We are sorry for the hurt we have caused. We trust your promise of forgiveness and await your life-giving word. Amen. Our God, who knows the deepest and darkest corners of our hearts, never fails to forgive our shortcomings. Receive his grace and know the freedom won for us through Christ our Savior. Amen. Let's sing the opening hymn, Morning Has Broken.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Shall we pray the prayer together? Loving God, you renew us when we feel our strength waning. Point us to your eternal promise in which we are secure. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. Are there any kids that would like to join me up front for a children's message this morning? All right. Come on, Jack. Come on, Layla. Have a seat. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you all doing? Good. Now, a lot of you were a part of VBS this last week. So what did you learn at VBS? Who did we talk about? Yeah, Layla. We talked about Joseph. What did we learn about Joseph? Oh, she's looking at Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve played Joseph for the kids. So... So their lesson each week was to get to talk to the real live Joseph. <laughs> what did we learn about Joseph? Did we learn that God has given us... Yeah, God gave us different gifts, and God has given us special abilities. What about if you need wisdom? Yeah, ask our generous God. So we learned lots about God, didn't we? Yeah, that's so great. And this has me thinking about the scripture readings that we're going to hear in a little bit. 
One of the verses that we hear is that we walk by faith and not by sight. So I want you all to imagine something with me. If all of the lights went out in the church right now, and if the, there was no light from the windows, it would be pretty dark in here, wouldn't it? Yeah, would it be really hard to find your seats, do you think? Yeah, it would be really tricky. And so when we talk about we walk by faith and not by sight, we can maybe pretend that we're in a really dark room. So if, if we were in a really dark room and you had to get back to your seats, what would be helpful to get you back there? A flashlight. A flashlight would be helpful. What if whoever you're sitting with were to say your name? What if they were to say, Cole, over here? So if your mom or dad said that, would that be helpful? Yeah? Would that be helpful for you if your mom said, hey, come back, let's sit? Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what happens with our God. So we walk by faith and not by sight means that we don't always know what's going to happen in the future, but we know that God is calling our name and is always going to be with us and that we can pray to God and that we know that God is faithful to us and so we can live to help others. You're singing Fill My Cup, aren't you? Yeah, Layla was singing one of our VBS songs. <laughs> all right, will you all please pray with me by repeating after me? Dear God, thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us to walk by faith, to walk by faith and not by sight, and not by sight. You're our flashlight, you're our flashlight, and our parents' voice, and our parents' voice, and you guide us always. And you guide us always. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, kids, you can head back to your seats. Thank you for coming up this morning. And we'll continue with the reading of Scripture. first lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through chapter 5, verse 10. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is rest wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For the slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groaned, groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, if indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at the home or away, we make it our aim to Please him, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Please stand.
Our gospel reading lesson is from Mark chapter 8, verses 20 through 26, a reading from Mark. Glory to you, Lord. They came from Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A reminder to all that on Sunday, June 26, we will be celebrating Pastor Phil's retirement, sending our blessings and well wishings. There's details on the invitation in your bulletin. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we do not lose heart. These first words from our reading from 2 Corinthians have been playing over and over in my mind this week. So we do not lose heart. And that verse, we do not lose heart, has been a chorus in my mind because there is so much happening in our lives and in our world that is frustrating, that is discouraging, things that do make us want to lose heart. I mean, the political rhetoric of this country where people seem so set on division and incapable of conversation with people who hold different views, how do you not lose heart? When one of our front-running presidential candidates is running on a platform of division and is openly misogynistic, how do you not lose heart? When one in five women in her life is sexually assaulted, and the news of the rape at Sanford, where the perpetrator received a light sentence and the public is focused on what the woman could have done differently, how do you not lose heart? Or even just last night, 20 people were killed in a shooting in Florida. How do you not lose heart? And those are just the big headlines. I mean, there's much smaller conversations that we've been having of infertility and job insecurity, of cancer and hunger and homelessness. How do you not lose heart? But you see, these words from Paul are meant to be encouraging. He's saying, so we do not lose heart. You see, he wrote this encouragement, not in an idyllic, easy, or calm time, but to a time and a place and a world just like the world we are living in. A world that's filled with injustice and inequality. A world where the natural response seems to be to lose heart, to become discouraged and give up. But Paul calls us elsewhere. So last week in our scripture reading we heard, we have this treasure in clay jars, And Paul wrote, I'm pressed but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, I'm struck down but not destroyed, I'm always carrying in my body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in my body. And then our reading for today immediately follows, so we do not lose heart. So the encouragement, we do not lose heart, follows the naming of reality, Things are hard, we are pressed, perplexed, struck down. We're clay jars. So a clay jar, as we heard last week, it's something that's easily cracked and broken. But Paul says, even in your brokenness, you can proclaim Christ. I think he's even saying, because of your brokenness, you proclaim Christ. When we proclaim Christ, we proclaim not only his life, but also his death and his resurrection. 
So we proclaim that this world is a broken place, but God's redemption and God's healing will ultimately have the last word. So we do not lose heart, even if it seems that the brokenness of this world is running rampant. So our reading for this morning continues on with this encouragement. So Paul is using language and imagery of faith as a now and a not yet. So we now know and experience God's redemption because of Jesus' death on the cross. But in this world of sin, we see that God's kingdom is not yet fully realized. So sometimes we call it, we receive foretastes of the feast to come. So while Christ's death and resurrection means that sin and death do not have the last word, we're still living in a broken world until God's kingdom fully breaks in. So we get glimpses of that kingdom, and we work towards that kingdom coming, even if it's not yet fully realized. And then Paul does something really important in this morning's reading. Paul reminds us that this world and that our lives matter. So the things we do, the words we say, the way we act matters. So Paul reminds us that our goal isn't to be removed from this world, but to be fully present in it. So we're present in the pain and the suffering, the hurt and the brokenness, knowing that brokenness will not have the last word that God's restoration and God's reconciliation will ultimately win. So we walk by faith and not by sight. So we walk by God's faithfulness and we cling to that promise of faithfulness. And we do that because of what we know of God and how God has acted in the past. That means we know what our future will be. So we do not lose heart, but rather we work to live out God's promise of mercy and faithfulness. So we do not lose heart because we don't just focus on the present, but on God's promised future. So we don't lose heart even when this world seems discouraging because God is faithful. Now there's a line from the song Hosanna from the worship band Hillsong United that has become a frequent prayer of mine. And that line is, break my heart for what breaks yours. So I believe that this prayer means that God's heart is broken at the injustices and brokenness of creation. And in that prayer we're saying, I want it to affect me too. So sexism, racism, xenophobia, misogyny, hunger, violence, all those things that are breaking God's heart should break our heart too. And our broken heart leads us to action, to the work of reconciliation and restored relationships. So I hold that prayer, break my heart for what breaks yours, in tension with the words from Paul this morning, we do not lose heart. For a broken heart is different than a discouraged heart. So my broken heart leads me to work for the restoration of relationships, whereas a discouraged heart leads me to pull the blanket over my head and go back to bed. So a broken heart brings us to relationship, and a discouraged heart isolates us. So as we encounter the injustice of this world, May our hearts be broken, but, we, but may we not lose heart because God is faithful and will bring us into the reconciliation of this world. So we trust that God has and will continue to be revealed throughout scriptures and then throughout the generations as faithful, steadfast, and loving. So we walk by faith that God is faithful, steadfast, and loving, and not by sight. Now, taking this call here at Calvary was an experience in my life of walking by faith and not by sight. So to give you a little bit of the timeline, Jacob and I were engaged just after Christmas 2013, and we planned a September 2014 wedding. Now, I was living in Wisconsin, and Jacob was in North Dakota, 
that's a whole state in between us, which is not exactly ideal for a married life. So we planned that I would move to North Dakota, and so I resigned my call in Wisconsin without having anything lined up in North Dakota. And so I moved from Wisconsin that June, and I did have an interim call lined up 90 miles away from my new North Dakota home. So we planned that I would look for something settled and closer, but with the wedding in just three short months and the need to fulfill my call as a pastor, 90 miles from home would do. We would look for something closer later. Well, three weeks later, I got a call from Pastor Lori at our synod office, and she said, I see in your paperwork you want to be closer to your fiancé and his kids, and so you're looking for something in northwest Minnesota or eastern North Dakota. Now, I don't know where your fiancé is, but I have a call that would be great for you, and you would be great for them in Purim. And my ears perked up. I mean, Purim was two and a half hours from where we lived, and it wasn't what we had planned, but it was closer to all of our family. In fact, it's the, the same town as Jacob's only sibling, Peter, who most of you know. And by reading the paperwork, it sounded like the place that God might be calling me to be. So that night, Jacob and I talked about it. And it turns out it wasn't just the town that Peter and Mindy lived in, it was also their church. In fact, Mindy a year earlier had said, hey, my church is going to start looking for a pastor. You should be it. <laughs> and so the, church, the, so the church that Jacob, the kids, and I were going to um, in two weeks. So the phone call happened the middle of July, and then my niece Olivia was baptized two weeks later. So I kind of incognito last summer came here, or two summers ago. So, so I went to Olivia's baptism. Two weeks later, I interviewed for the call here. Three weeks later, my wedding occurred. And then two weeks after that, I got the phone call extending the call to me. Is your head spinning? <laughs> Mine was too. <laughs> So it wasn't what we had planned, Jacob and I, for the beginning of our married life, for the moving, for him resigning his call without knowing what would be next. So I began here, Christmas 2014. Jacob resigned his call, began the six-month process to find a call. We resettled custody of the kids, and we walked by faith and not by sight. So we walked by faith because of what we knew of God and how God had acted in the past, we knew what our future ultimately would be. And again, God has proven to be faithful. Jacob has a call to a church community he deeply cares about. The kids are happy and healthy. And I'm here, living out my call as your associate pastor, able to build relationships with you and to work together as we discern where God is calling us in the future. And now soon, we're going to enter another time where we will walk by faith and not by sight. When Pastor Phil announced his retirement in January, July 1st seemed like a really, really far time away. In the middle of the snow and the cold, the heat of the summer when the retirement was happening seemed like it would never come. And now here we are, only a few weeks away. While we give thanks for Pastor Phil's long call here, and while we celebrate with him as he begins his retirement, we also wonder, what about us? What does this change in leadership mean for us? And we might be tempted to lose heart. And so these words from Paul encourage us as we are on the cusp of transition. Do not lose heart. Walk by faith, not by sight. Because we know of God and how God has acted to us at Calvary in the past, so we know what our future will be. We've seen how God has been faithful to us, and we trust that God will continue to be faithful to us. So we trust that God is still calling us to relationships at Calvary. We trust that God is still present among us, is working through us, as we build connections, community, and relationships with each other. We trust that God will bring us to God's reconciliation in this world. And as we trust that God will use us to reconcile the world, that means we work alongside one another. 
means we let our hearts be broken by what, God, what, by what breaks God's heart to bring restoration. We let ourselves be vulnerable and in community with one another, and we do not lose heart. So we don't pull the covers over our head. We don't isolate ourselves from each other, but we come together in community. So we trust in God's redeeming and reconciling work as we walk by faith and not by sight. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may stay seated as we sing together, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Please stand as you are able for the affirmation of faith in the, in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our generosity corner today is thanking the generosity of our Bible school volunteers. I counted on that list in the bulletin 45 volunteers 
Vacation Bible School is always very powerful. I would guess that if I asked you, you might have some memories of your own Vacation Bible School. I was so struck by little three-year-olds having their first experience at church and just so pleased at, at how grown up they were. Many of our kids brought friends, some who had never been in church before in their lives, and they loved it. Praise God. We have junior high and high school kids who stepped up to be helpers, and they did a great job. Summer vacation is brand new, and the kids love to run and play and sing and learn in an active way. You can see videos of this in the fellowship hall. We have teachers and helpers in the classroom, music and art leaders, kitchen and outside activity leaders, registration hosts, custodians who clean up every day, decorators, children's ministry committee members, and we especially thank Becky Stoley, Calvary's children's ministry coordinator, who planned and executed a great program, recruited great volunteers, and provided the strong center in Christ's love that held it all together. So thanks to all of you for your generosity. Let's put our hands together. Last week was Cancer Survivors Week, so I'd like to take another opportunity in light of our Relay for Life breakfast today, and you may or may not feel brave enough to do this, but would, it would mean a lot if you could. I'd love to ask that the cancer survivors in our group would stand. Would you feel comfortable doing that? If you are a cancer survivor, would you stand? Tell me, is this unbelievable or what? We praise God for you. At this time, we're going to receive the offering.
We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our guide and guard, so often we put our trust in our own sight instead of following your trusted path in all the changes of our life, in changes for Calvary, in changes for Mary Sue and for me, and lots of other people who are moving, who are facing lots of changes. May we never lose sight of you and all that you have promised. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, keep us mindful that even while our stay on earth is temporary, we bear responsibility for the care of this planet. Grant us compassion and vision to see and act beyond ourselves for the benefit of all who would come after us. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who travel at this time of year, knowing that whether we are at home or away, we are your people. Lord, we think of loved ones far from us, our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our grandparents, who are not close to us. They're out of our reach to care for them. Lord, we trust them into your hands. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, so many are tempted to lose heart, feeling their frailty, doubting your presence. Lord, give us not discouraged hearts, but yes, allow us to break our hearts on behalf of others. But then give us your heart, give us faith. We pray for all in special need of your healing, especially Ron Buckhouse, Shirley Bunker, Florence Kassler, Mary Eckhoff, David Arlene Erickson, Connie Hansen, Opal Hegley, Bob and Shirley Moe, Ramel Nelson, Ross Olson, Robert Renicky, Wayne and Bobby Sachs, Marcy Sunberg, Marky Vandestreek, Jan Anderson, Sarah Simpson Danhoff, Jordan Dennis, Danium Dickey, Ellen Lenz, Barbie Ruther, Omer Tweeten, Gerald Wegscheid. Lord, be with them in this special time. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Light of the world, wherever there is pain, destruction, or suffering, make us the instruments of your love and service to all in need. Lord, we thank you for our Bible school kids, parents, and helpers. And Lord, we pray especially for those new kids, those new, new families who came to VBS. Lord, help us each to go out and touch them with our, with our love, invite them, Make them feel welcome so that they could feel included in a community of God's people. Lord God, we are so thankful for survivors of cancer all through our community and world. We are grateful for the advances of science. We are grateful for our doctors, nurses, pharmacists, therapists, all the people who help make this possible. Lord, continue to support those who have suffered cancer and their families or who currently are going through treatment. Lord, you are the healer. You are the great physician. Bring them strength and recovery. We pray for the work of our Relay for Life in Otter, East Ottertail County and for our Calvary team. Lord, bless their work. We thank you for their hauling people to the hospital and all the other things that they do, the money that they raise for research and support. Lord, we thank you for them. They are instruments of your peace. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We offer up to you all those who have entered eternal glory and now at home with you. May their example encourage us to live faithfully and not fear what lies beyond this world. Faithful Lord, Hear our prayer. For these and all others who need our prayers, we ask your mercy and never-failing compassion. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And shall we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.